Today we're going to be looking at another heavily requested video by Kurtz Kazan. This one is called, Building a Mars Base is a Horrible Idea, but let's do it anyway. <laughs> Not sure what they mean by that. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. From hostile deserts to lonely islands and the highest mountains, wherever there is space to expand into, humans do so. So it's hardly surprising that we're already making preparations to set foot on Mars and to create the first permanent colony outside of Earth, maybe even terraform another planet and turn it into a second blue home. But wait, before we can get to the nice future stuff, <laughs> we first have to complete stuff. the second phase of colonization, creating a semi-permanent outpost to prepare the ground for a larger human presence. But doing so will be gruesome. Well, just like the first explorers, things didn't exactly turn out for them too good. Even for an expansionist species like us, Mars is extreme. At first glance, Mars Extreme. seems familiar. Polar ice caps, large <laughs> valleys, liquid water under its surface, and a day barely longer than Earth's. The ideal place for us to go. Unfortunately, Mars is actually a cold, radioactive desert where the ground is poisonous and breathing is impossible. So the radiation aspect, uh, one of the things we take for granted on Earth is a strong magnetic field. Another is a thick atmosphere to protect us from cosmic radiation. So you would get quite a bit of dose on Mars that might even be better off living underground on Mars and only going to the surface when you need to or just having drones do it. Because you're going to get way worse dose working on Mars than you would get in. And you would get just about anywhere on Earth, including... Uh, including at nuclear facilities, including around the Chernobyl site, unless you're talking about you're in the same room of the, the element, the elephant's foot. But yeah, you're going to need some radiation protection. I mean, at least the gravity's weaker, so carrying around all that lead won't be, won't be as heavy, but there are some long-term biological effects of weaker gravity too. Mars is awful. You almost certainly don't want to go there. The pioneers doing the hard work on Mars will have an intensely stressful life filled with incredibly challenging problems never encountered before. But there are plenty of people willing to do that work and we have the technology to enable them to do it. Sure. For this video, we will assume there have been prior missions to Mars to scout out a good place for an outpost, store resources and equipment, and that there's already a moon base that serves as a hub for Mars missions. That would be nice. <laughs> Yeah, build the base on the moon first. Okay. The first major challenge for our outpost is the fact that Mars is very energy poor. Because of its distance from the sun, solar power is only 40% as effective as on Earth. But even this weakened sunlight is often obscured for days by enormous dust storms. Solar power alone will probably not be enough. Alternatives such as wind power and geothermal energy are also unfeasible as there's hardly any atmosphere and Mars's interior yeah. is much too cold. Initially, nuclear technology might be the only option. Since Mars doesn't have easily accessible radioactive elements, the nuclear fuel needs to come from Earth. Note that they said easily accessible elements as in ones that you can use to make a nuclear power plant. Mars is quite radioactive, mainly just because of what it gets from, from space, but you can't really use any of that to make a nuclear power plant that uses, that uses fission, or fusion for that matter, just at, at least compared to using resources on Earth. With the reactor, if we do set it up, it could power our small outpost for the first few years. Unfortunately, all that energy won't... Would actually last a pretty long time. I mean, how big is this outpost? I mean... You wouldn't, this wouldn't be a massive nuclear power plant, maybe on the order of, let's say it's a small modular reactor. Even a, even a micro reactor, like one that can fit in the back of a truck, can be on the order of 1 to 10 megawatts, and it would last a pretty long time. Though, they, though you'd mainly be using it as a heat source, so I guess that would probably be your biggest load, would just be heating since it's so cold on Mars. That's conceivable. 
even a small modular reactor, if we can get them there, that would be good. But those are on the order of um, 125 to 250 megawatts. Mainly just because while it's small and easy to transport on Earth by, by rail, don't exactly have that in space, at least not initially, but that could be one way the Mars colony scales up. Very useful if we I do like breathe. the way they're thinking with nuclear. Mars' atmosphere is only 1% as dense as Earth's and mostly made up of CO2. So our habitats need to be pressurized and filled with an artificial atmosphere made of nitrogen and oxygen, which comes with more problems. Corners and flat walls are weak points, so the habitats will have rounded and smooth shapes to handle sure. the stress of great pressure differences between the interior and exterior. That's why they're often rounded, um, like, like a reactor pressure vessel, anything that, that's a true containment building and that wanting to keep pressure on one side and not pressure on the other side. Uh, reactor, con reactor containment building and reactor pressure vessels kind of work the opposite way of, say, a um, space station or pods do, and this Mars base would be basically like a space station, living in a space station except on the surface of a planet. So you'd have a little bit of gravity, but it'd be kind of like living in a space station. The airlocks need to be very airtight and work perfectly every time. Without <laughs> an extensive yeah. magnetosphere or a dense atmosphere... Really, they need, to be, uh, they need to be continuously monitored for any signs of wear and tear and would need to have multiple layers of security for your airlock in case one of them fails. Because that's, that's your lifeline. <laughs> is having keeping that oxygen in of all radiation coming from space reaches the ground a person on the surface would be subjected to 50 times the radiation yep. that they would be on earth three years on the surface of mars exceeds the radiation dose limits imposed on nasa astronauts for their entire career and nasa dose limits are higher than that of radiation workers on earth um in uh in nuclear power plants which is crazy people talk about how dangerous you know like working at a nuclear plant allegedly is because you get exposed to radiation it's like not really um i very rarely got dosed much above background and and all the time i spent there and there are some jobs that have that have higher doses but compared to astronauts you don't see it that much this increases cancer risks significantly to prevent that, we could shield our habitats with a thick layer of frozen CO2 that can be harvested directly from the atmosphere. Covering the dry ice with a meter of dirt would further increase the level of protection. Sadly, this means almost no windows. I guess that's one thing, so, I mean, I mentioned build it underground, so it's made of build it and put the ground on top of you, okay? <laughs> From the inside, works. most living spaces will be windowless tunnels. From the outside, they'll look like burial mounds. All of this would still not hold back all the radiation, but reduce it just enough to be survivable for long periods of time. I still think it would be easier to just build it underground, just so you don't have to move all of the stuff on top of you, but... I don't know. I have to see what the uh, Martian Geological Survey say if that's if there's a viable spot to really do that. I, I don't actually know the answer to that. Won't, however, protect anyone who ventures outside. So remote controlled robots will be used for routine yeah, work on the drones. surface while our crew stays inside. Staying in these particular drones. Um, so you're not this isn't like that scene in in Chernobyl where the drone wouldn't work, but they sent people up to the roof. This is still, this is high dose, but this is high dose over very long periods of time, not a very intense field of broken bits of reactor core on top of a building. So while it is high, it's not nearly as high as the, uh, as the immediately after Chernobyl bits and pieces of the core being within spitting distance of that, no. Because the radiation source is still pretty far away. It's from, uh, it's, it's, it's cosmic radiation from stars, pulsars, um, gamma ray sources that you just see in space that are very far away from Mars. Side is a good idea for another reason, Mars dust. It's much finer than dust on Earth, so it could find its way into the gears or electronics of our machines. Because it's also very dry, it's electrostatically charged, sticking yeah. to everything, like spacesuits. It would be impossible to avoid carrying lots of Mars dust into our habitat and into the lungs of our crew. 
To make this even worse, Mars's soil is filled with very toxic perchlorate salts. Ooh. Constant exposure like could be deadly. <laughs> this like problem that. can still be overcome, though. Spacesuits, for example, could be made in a way that they never truly enter the base, but stay attached to the outside of the habitats. Okay, great. That's now we've good. safely isolated humans in terms of energy and air, and protected them from cancer, we just need to feed them. <laughs> Water is easy to come by if a settlement is like positioned potatoes, near the Martian like poles with their thick layers of ice. Growing food is a different kind of challenge, though. Mars's soils are alkaline and lack the vital nitrogen compounds that plants need to grow. Before mm. we can grow anything, we will have to decontaminate the soil, which is difficult and expensive. Then the soil can be fertilized using recycled biological waste. All of this will take a lot of time and is very energy intensive. Got to use, make more nuclear reactors. There you go. And make the, uh, the full, because that, yeah, that's, I, I can see what they're getting. I, I didn't think of the, uh, like the soil purification and all that. That takes a lot of energy. Um, like on, on a nuclear submarine, I know what, one of the things the, uh, the boat's reactor does, the, the sub's reactor does, is will uh, desalinate so you can get some, some of the water. So that's the main reason why nuclear is clearly going to have the edge on Mars, is just because if you, need, you need a lot of energy. And nuclear is the best way that we know how to do it, at least for now. So we might use aquaponics to raise fish and plants yeah, together, some heavily biased. making the astronauts' diets more varied and tasty at the same time. Mm, this will Martian be an important fillet. psychological boost for our overworked crew. All of these things don't solve Not to one mention fundamental they'd be in problem, darkness though. The whole time. Mars has only 38% of Earth's surface gravity, mm -hmm. which could cause muscle wasting, bone yep. loss, and cardiovascular problems. While this might be solved in the future by setting up rotating <laughs> living spaces, <laughs> for now around. our crew has to live with low gravity and exercise a lot to slow the degradation down. Yes. The crews will probably have you to rotate every few station. years. After being stuck indoors in tight. Though I will say that this is less extreme than the gravity part is less extreme than being in zero G in the space station, but it takes longer to rotate people out, including a uh, lo long voyage through space back to Earth. I wouldn't want to go there. Bases without windows, with the same people, performing the same routines day in, day out, with little contact from the outside world, and a lot to worry about. Base, so basically working in a nuclear power plant during an outage when you're in and out, just the day in grind. You don't have a lot to worry about though, but that on top of all the hazards, hmm, no thank you. Like Antarctic scientists or submarine staff, they will undergo intense psychological screening to make sure they're mentally resilient enough to handle this lifestyle for several years. I've heard crazy stories about things that happen on submarines. So I, I was never on one. I was never in the Navy, but a lot of my, uh, a lot of my colleagues were. And um, it seems like every person I talk to has a story that's even crazier than the previous person I talked to. And it's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a lot. <laughs> I'm sure if there's any um, uh, people that were on submarines will uh, have some interesting ideas. Establishing the first real infrastructure on Mars will be extremely taxing work that only a group of very determined and competent people can do. Luckily, we have enough of these on Earth. It's true. And there you have it, a small Mars base that will survive for at least a few decades. As long as it's getting a constant supply of resources, parts, nuclear fuel and crews from Earth. Unfortunately, I'm glad they Mars in the and nuclear Earth field. are separated by millions of kilometers and orbital periods that leave only a narrow travel window yes. every two years. If there's an emergency in the colony, Earth wouldn't be able to help until the next travel window opens. Helpers may arrive on a planet filled with corpses. Ugh. Settling Mars will be the toughest challenge we have ever faced. It will be gruesome work to establish the infrastructure we need. But we're stubborn, and we like extreme challenges. <laughs> if we push through phase two of colonization, anything is possible. Cities illuminating the dark Martian night, a hub for travel between the planets, industries setting foot in orbit, terraforming, a true multi-planetary future. That's cool. Going to Mars is hard, but worth it. And that if hard we're intermediate lucky, stuff. we might be around long enough to see it happening and cheer on the people who take on these challenges for the benefit of us all.
such an inspirational note to uh, to leave us on. I, I like it. I, <laughs> but yeah, I, I get what they mean by a horrible idea as that horrible um, transition period before things got good. But we've we've seen this before in human history, just like the the Industrial Revolution, all the really the dirty the dirty factories, people using coal exclusively as an energy source. Um, if you think coal's bad now, coal was way worse back then. So uh, <laughs> with just no no regulations, no filtration, uh, um, just a just a mess, a pollutant mess. And now we've that we've gotten better technology, such a, such as nuclear power, we can finally start to. We're reaping a lot of the uh, the benefits of a uh, technological society. Yeah, M Mars will be similar. There'll be this painful uh, painful period for a little while, but then things will get good. It's just part of uh, part of progress, or maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe we'll find some ways that to make things a little bit less painful. Like, well, maybe just putting the stuff underground versus having to bury ourselves in dirt might be a little easier <laughs> and a few other a few other innovations that we probably haven't even thought of yet that can just make this uh make this colonization period better thanks so much for the recommendation and thank you for watching i'll see you next time